Hi everybody, we're live. My name's John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof. Sam, how are you doing this week? Good, how are you doing, John? Yeah, not too bad, um, all, all things considered. And we are sort of at the pointy end of the year, so... Um, yeah, we, we, we want to take another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we want to take an opportunity re to reflect on some of the things that we learnt this year, but we are going out live to all of the places. So um, if you are out there and watching live, please let us know where you're coming to us from in the chat. And we'd love to hear if there are particular things that you've learnt this year and uh, what they might be. And we're particularly focused on things that relate to video, live streaming, content creation today. Um, so I, I guess, uh, you know, as we wait for a few people to, to join us, Sam, uh, let's, let's just get stuck into some of the things that we've actually learnt this year. So your first one, and it's funny because we talk about this every single time we talk to each other, is That's about true. not spreading yourself too thin in all of the places. Yeah, I mean, I think this year for for sure we've we've just seen an abundance of new platforms popping up and there is a tendency for people to be like, "Oh, a new shiny thing. I got to go over. I got to do that and, you know, try and and make my mark on there," uh which I'm guilty of. Um at the same time, I highly suggest going there's a slight buzz about this. I'm going to save my username just in case it does pop off, but as I've said before, and I try to maintain in my own, you know, ethos, find like two to three, stick with those, go for it, you know, and and if you have more time, maybe once you've established your habits around those two to three, you can expand on uh, if you can work it in without really burning yourself out. But I think ultimately the the risk of there just being so many platforms is that you're gonna you're gonna spread yourself too thin and you are gonna burn out and you're gonna be like that's it now i'm not doing anything anywhere <laughs> for six months absolutely and i i guess and I, I i sort of joke that we talk about this all the time and we, we certainly do and like you say that and i'm like but sam the fomo i don't i i want to yeah. be in all of the places and i kind of i i guess the the place that i've personally arrived at these days is that there are really two destinations that I'm very heavily invested in. And then there's a whole bunch of places that I will upload random stuff and just see what happens. Um, right. So, I mean, for me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably predominantly about LinkedIn uh, first and then YouTube second, but I am sort of curious about what your, your favorite platforms are in, in terms of, of that, that focus. I'll, I'll try and talk over the garbage truck that has decided to come by today because the holidays threw their schedule off. So normally they wouldn't be here. And I apologize for anyone <laughs> who can hear those. And uh, now I think it's gone far enough. Um, I, you know, I am primarily a Twitch person right now. That is my, my main focus for both myself and the kitten cam. Um, a long time ago, <laughs> I, I peaked on YouTube and, you know, I have, a. I have a lot of numbers there, but lately it has not been so um, active, but it is something that peripherally I am trying to put a little more energy into to bring back. Uh, but also TikTok is kind of, um, you know, the, the big flavor of the month between YouTube shorts and TikTok. It's the vertical uh, platforms that I'm kind of paying attention to the most currently. Um, and then, yeah, we just talked about not spreading yourself too thin, but now I'm already at my, my threshold. Uh, I have added on amp, which is Amazon's, uh, live radio, uh, mobile app. Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with what I'm looking to do. And we'll, uh, we'll reevaluate that in the next month or so and see, is that all what I want to stay focused on? Because I guess that's the other thing, like, uh, it's, and we, I, I'm sure we spoke about this as recently as last week, but you kind of need to give yourself enough time on a new platform to, to get enough data to decide if you want to continue in that fashion or not. I guess personally, I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that if, uh, you know, if, and obviously different platforms have different sensibilities, um, but you know, if I've made something and I'm essentially giving it away for free, um, and it's not you know, necessarily a great, um, 
time suck on on my behalf if i can just upload it to various places um i i, right. I try to do that i mean i don't always do that sometimes you know things make sense in some places and not others um, but certainly if I've got a gem of an idea and I think I can adapt it ever so slightly to, to work somewhere else, I will certainly try to do that. Yeah. And I, and I think that's really what it comes down to is like, if you have the time and it's not that big a lift, do it, go for it. But also being able to customize it for those other platforms, um, whether or not there's, I don't know how, how true all of this is. But there's a lot of people out there, these gurus that talk about these kind of things and repurposing. Um, and the sort of sentiment behind it is there's a lot of metadata that when you go into like a TikTok uh, and create your video there and then just download it, aside from the fact that it's going to have that TikTok watermark on it, there's other metadata that's put in there. And the other platforms like YouTube and Instagram, where you may be sharing those, will see that and downplay those to their algorithm. Uh, so if you're going into your editing software, creating your vertical video there and even customizing it. So there's a YouTube version, an Instagram version, a TikTok version, that's better. You know, also for the, the user experience, you want not to be saying TikTok on three different platforms. <laughs> where they're sure. going, well, I'm not TikTok, <laughs> so you're not even looking for this comment, are you? <laughs> And I must admit, I don't, I really don't, and, and maybe this is something we can have a look at together in the new year sometime, but I don't use any of the apps to, to create my content. Like, I, it, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a mobile creator by any stretch of the imagination. I do everything on desktop. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's easy, it can be easy enough to repurpose things into different formats. And that actually brings me to my first uh, lesson of 2022, which is don't sleep on short form video content, yeah. uh, vertical video content, I should say. Uh, and you know, you've, you've been talking about this for a really long time. I've been really, really resistant to it, but I have to tell you for every view on YouTube that my, uh, my horizontal video gets, uh, I get at least another 50 on, on short form videos usually. Mm -hmm. And I literally, you know, I just tried this the other day and I mean, I'm, I have the benefit of being in front of a green screen. So, you know, I can pretty easily repurpose the content from a vertical to a horizontal form without it looking too contrived. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I just did this over the weekend and, and sure enough, you know, those, those, those YouTube shorts views are coming in thick and fast. And I don't really know if they're going to lead to more subscribers or, or relationships. I know I keep joking about building a relationship 15 seconds at a time. But I think <laughs> for someone whose channel is as new as mine is, you know, just anything you can do to sort of generate that awareness is is a wonderful thing. Um, and obviously, I know you've been doing a lot on, on TikTok and, and a little bit on YouTube shorts as well. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you... Like, do you, what are the opportunities, do you think, in, in this vertical format? You know, I... I it really has become its own thing. And I do think there are subscribers there. And I do think there are a, a world of brand deals out there for people who are looking for monetization revenue and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, the, the success rate of shorts versus long, long form on a platform like YouTube has just completely been, uh, you know, switched because as you said, for every view I get on a long form video, I get 10 to 50 for a shorts. Um, uh, the, the big difference right now, I think, is that shorts are maybe a 48 hour window and then pretty much they're gone. I don't, I don't know that they're going to play to an evergreen, you know, I don't know that next year those six, Halloween videos I made are going to pop up again. Um, so I do think it's more of a, a, a of a hyper attention, you know, <laughs> like blip in time, like this is zeitgeist kind of stuff. Um, but, with you know, it's also a lot easier to put a lot of this stuff out. So I think that all makes sense. I think it's a little more forgiving from the viewer side on, uh, you know, how much or how little you need to put into it. Um, but there are, you know, a plethora 
of ways to utilize these for things like marketing, for uh, as a content creator, for ways of doing sponsored content and brand deals. And I think that's a lot of stuff we're going to get into in this coming year. Um, so yeah, uh, vertical video and shorts, they're here to stay. Nice. Okay. Let's, uh, let's turn our attention. Uh, actually, before we do, just a reminder, if you're joining us live, uh, please say hi in the chat. We'd love to hear where you're coming to us from. Uh, my name is John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof today. And we're talking about the things that we learned in 2022 as video creators and uh, content creators more generally. So Sam, uh, your next uh, tip here is about getting better at reusing content. Yeah, I mean, we've obviously touched on this already, and this is something that you are, are really good at, and I'm trying to uh, take, uh, take cues from you on this, you know, and it's something that I see it and I know it's a good idea, but man, the minute I do something, I'm like, that's done, it's been <laughs> done, I'm not touching that again, uh, and I, it's a terrible mindset and I want to get past that. Um, but also I just, oh, I hate editing, even though I'm good at it. I just don't want to open the editing software. I don't want to do stuff. That's why I gravitate toward doing live. Uh, but yeah, we, I think we all need to get better at reusing content, whether it's taking a live and clipping it down or taking a long form video and making a short video, making a one by one square video, uh, and even just taking the same video, posting it, on your social media more than one time you know uh, and I, it's 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 funny because you sort of alluded to the fact that maybe short form video um doesn't have the same lifespan as as uh some of the more traditional forms and i have seen some people on social media be like just download your most popular tiktok and repost it every month and i haven't yeah. i haven't really done that um but i'm i'm like it just it seems so intriguing to me that 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 probably it, is a, a legitimate strategy for something i think so um you know i mean there's what 7 billion people in the world and a good a good half of them at least must be online at this point right i don't even know what the numbers are so if you're doing a video and it's getting seen by less than a million people there's a really good chance that the next time you put that same video out, 90% of the people that see it are brand new eyeballs. Um, and I, I think it's a fact that you can just reuse this content over and over again. And this isn't new to shorts. I remember, oh, about a decade ago, uh, Michael Buckley, who had a very famous uh, like news channel, new entertainment news channel, What the Buck. Sort of a showbiz gossipy thing, yeah. Yeah, a gossip news. Uh, he, he said he did the same thing, you know, in a lot of ways with his videos on YouTube, which were long form videos at the time. And he would repost stuff and I'm like, so that's a strategy that's been around. Um, and it, it's just something about, you know, your own awareness of it that prevents a lot of us from doing things like that. And it's like, it's already there. <laughs> Can I just get new eyeballs on the old content? Yeah, and I mean, in, on some level, that is n that's that's a lovely, very seductive idea. And I guess different platforms treat these things differently. So, I mean, yeah, my my big thing is, I I firmly believe if something is worth saying, it's it's kind of worth saying more than once. And I yes. kind of feel like you know, we uh we can be so self-conscious about this as as content creators but the truth is you know as you say not everybody's seeing the content the first time around they're probably not even seeing it the fifth or, or tenth time around but i think right. the other thing too is that um you know if you if you do something and then you do it again and you do it again uh, you know we're we're so worried that people are going to see that and get bored of it but i feel like on some primal level um it almost becomes part of your um your shtick at that point in time and people you know if you do something that's funny and memorable people love that they will reference yeah. that so often i i guess um in some ways you, you sort of mentioned that you you're not crazy about editing i actually love editing it's really bizarre but i um i get stuck into camtasia and i I rearrange things and like there, there, there are like, I did something two or three weeks ago and 
I did a live and it had some pre-recorded material in it and then I edited it together and then I, you know, remixed it. And I noticed there's some, there's one tiny little part of it that's actually incorrect. And I want to go back yeah. and, and just sort of go and, and edit that. And I mean, the nice thing is because I've got all my files ready to go, it's literally just going to be me putting a, a, um, a static image over the top of something and just narrating for like 30 seconds and then exporting that video out. I guess the thing that I, I kind of want to be conscious of in YouTube is that maybe I unlist that video or make it private. I don't right. delete it because yeah. I'm desperate to accumulate whatever watch time I can at this point in time. So, you know, it, it's funny because I, I recall, um, somebody a while back saying like they intentionally put mistakes in their videos for people to call them out. Mm -hmm. Um, and then more recently, uh, a, a Dorian deck who, uh, was famous. I'm just dropping all the old school YouTubers right now, but <laughs> Dorian deck, uh, created OMG facts and then sold that. Uh, he came back about a year ago on TikTok and skyrocketed to like a million viewers in like a month or some nonsense. Um, and very recently put out he does fact videos over there now this video and he had like a slip of the tongue where he said after instead of before which completely changed the meaning of a sentence and he put out another video you know to sort of be a humbly like oopsie look at what i did and that video hit a million views and it's like yeah, maybe play into that, you know, you can reutilize things and also spin off of things and mistakes are fine. <laughs> Me, mistakes are fine. Although I, you know, there is a whole subset of the population that really leans into that quite cynically sure. and they will just, you know, um, I add all the typos in there deliberately. And, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, some of those yes. things are great on an engagement basis. Like, you know, if you want to start a fight or if you want to, you know, have people uh, comment on it. I don't know. I, it's it's not my my scene necessarily, no, yeah, yeah. but I acknowledge that it can be a, a good place to to get a little bit of engagement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's let's check out um my, my one of the other things that I learned this year and um my teleprompter. I've got to talk about my teleprompter. Yeah. So um. Let me just make sure I'm on that screen so I can show you a picture of this as I talk about it a little bit. So I bought a teleprompter. I want to say, I, I, I don't really remember when. Um, time has no meaning these days. Every day is Blur's Day. But uh, essentially, I, I bought this this teleprompter. Um, it's a... Um, it's a Desview teleprompter. It's, you know, you put your phone underneath it. Um, I've actually mm -hmm. attached mine to uh, my Elgato... Um, multi mounts and I've, I've got some strong arm mounts holding it in place. And I guess like the, there are a few things I want to say about this. And one of them is, um, people, people have this really weird idea when it comes to reading and speaking, um, extemporaneously. So just talking mm -hmm. off, off the cuff and, you know, people think it's an either all arrangement. And, you know, I just, I, I think that and they'll often say things like, oh, you know, I'm not good at reading, so I won't do that. And to me, I feel like if you're not good at reading, maybe just practice reading and get better at that. Sure. And I guess it's <laughs> it's sort of informed a little bit by my community radio background. Like there are things, obviously you're going to have a conversation with your audience, um, but there are some things that you, you're not making up. You're not making up the weather. You're not improvising the news, you know, things like yeah. that. Um, so, and I guess for me personally, I just, it blew my mind the first time that I wrote a, a short script, I put it in there. Um, it actually comes with, with a great little remote. So, uh, which, which connects to your phone via Bluetooth. And it just blew my mind how quickly I was able to get a decent take. And, um, obviously the camera is positioned right be, uh, behind the unit. So I've always got an eye line, whether I'm actually reading from that or not. But I can also actually uh, use the the phone if if I'm having a virtual meeting, for example, like on Microsoft Teams. I can join that from two different devices, so I can put that on the phone too, and I can sort of see. Uh, I can look uh, my the person I'm talking to pretty much straight in the eyes, and you know it gives the impression that I'm looking at the camera, which is a really beautiful thing as well. Um, but I just you know people. It blows my mind how many people are sort of resistant to this idea, and I just it's been so amazing for me. Um, cause like I can literally get things in a single take and be happy with them and, you know, 
and go straight into the editing software. It's, it's completely revolutionized my life and my process. Um, and, and I'm surprised how hard a sell it is to get other people interested, but I mean, good luck to them. I'm going to keep using mine and I'm, I'm very happy with it. How much did that unit run for the, the unit itself, not the mounts and all that? Yeah, I, I think it was a couple of, um, hundred, uh, dollars Australian. Um, so I, I mean, it, it is an investment. Um, yeah. and I guess before I was doing that, um, the other thing that I recommend for people who are just getting started is if you actually just, there are so many teleprompter apps that are available on phones, yes. even if you just get a little tripod and put it roughly in the, the general vicinity of what you're looking at to record, that can be a great way of starting. I mean, the, yep. the benefit of the, the real thing is that, you know, through the, the wonders of, of mirrors and, and glass, you, you're looking, you know, directly at the yeah, thing that is recording right the camera. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. there's a few um, like three or four online browser based ones as well and apps you can download for your desktop. Uh, but of course, this is the better version when it's right in front of the camera like that. Um, and I think, you know, a misnomer of, of people who are sort of anti this whole thing is they think you have to have everything scripted out and you're reading the entire script. You, you There's different methodologies and different ways to handle all of this. Some people, yes, you'll prefer to have a, an entire script that you can read. And some people will just get bullet points of being, here's the thing I want to talk about. We're going to do this, this, and this. I just need those brief factoids that I can be like, yeah, next up, we're going to do this. Oh, coming up with the weather and, you know, whatever it is. It's 95 out. Uh, and then you're just improvising as you do. Um, so it's, it's just another tool in the arsenal to make you better at what you're doing and you find your own method. Absolutely. And I guess, um, you know, and, and I'll bring up that picture again, uh, just to give people a sense, but one of the, the things that, you know, I, I try to avoid anything that may introduce friction into my content creation process. Mm -hmm. And because of that, like this, this camera is mounted and ready to go 24 seven. I literally yeah, hit a switch on, on the camera, I turn the lights on and I can be recording or going live within literally seconds. Um, and I, you know, it's funny because there are times where I, I, I want to take the camera out and maybe go out in the wild and film something. And I think, honestly, I might just buy a second camera because I just, yeah. you know, it is so good having that there ready to go all the time. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I love it. And again, you know, you don't necessarily, it is an investment as, as we said. So, you know, you don't necessarily need to run out and buy this or, or something similar to it, but there are certainly opportunities to do that. And, uh, you know, even just, you know, reading from the screen and reading from the page, reading out loud is a really important skill. Um, obviously a lot of the, the stuff I do is on LinkedIn and, um, you know, I know people and I work with people that are so good at communicating and fluent at speaking. But the minute they have to read something, it's like, uh, you know, a fourth grader grumbling through a speech and just not, you know, not maintaining eye contact, just, just grumbling through it. And it's really, really painful. Um, but anyway, we do have uh, somebody in the chat. Joe, how you doing, Joe? Hey, Joe. Good to see you again. Um, <laughs> not our first live stream. I think this is, a, this is our second. Uh, it's our second, and, yep. yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing this uh, every Friday going forward pretty much every Friday. Uh, so thanks for dropping in. Yeah, we'll be talking about live streaming and content creation. And uh, how, how's it been? How are you going? What's what's your uh, what are what are your goals for the new year? Let us know. Cool. Thanks for commenting. Thanks, um, Joe. Um, yeah. So again, uh, if you we, we sort of started doing this live last week. So uh, a lot of people won't know this, but Sam and I have been having sort of weekly conversations um, about video and, and live streaming for a number of weeks. And we'd sort of been recording them offline and I was trying to edit them and, and post them, but um, yep. that was a little time consuming. So we're trying to do it live. We're trying to get a little bit more um, audience participation as well. So thanks, uh, Joe, for, for joining us today. Happy uh, 2023 when it arrives to you as well. Um, let's, uh, let's head over to, uh, Sam's, uh, next, next learning about habits and batch processing. So I did want to say, and you can leave that on the screen, what you, you kind of touched on this with the, the last topic, um, with having your, your, uh, teleprompter and your camera mounted and set, and you can just sit down and go. 
and I, I have a very similar setup without the teleprompter uh, for my live streaming setup because yeah, for there was several times where I would use the same camera for both YouTube creation and live streaming. And I would spend, you know, 20 minutes breaking down and setting up again somewhere else and then vice versa. And the ability to just come in, sit down and boom, go, I'm live streaming. I can do it. Like that's huge. And that goes right into building, a, you know, processes and habits and stuff like that. Cause you want to minimize that sort of, uh, extraneous work of like doing other stuff to get to the actual creation of your content or or you know post work or whatever it is um and i i might just interrupt briefly just yeah. uh, i know that there are people out there and i mean i'm I, I must say i'm very fortunate to have a dedicated sort of space um to, yes. to do this um but i will see people from time to time who have wonderful kit, but they have to unpack it and repack it every single yeah, time. That, that and I just look me. at that and go, I would never make anything ever. <laughs> it just it. looks, I need a nap just watching them do it. Um, yeah. and, and admittedly, like this is, I, I'm kind of in a privileged position right. to have a really nice desk and, and, and the space to do this. I know that's not for everybody, but if there is anything that you can do to sort of reduce that friction, um, you know, I, I, I say do it. And, and to be honest, like I, I alluded to the fact that I might buy another, you know, thousand dollar camera just for the yeah. flexibility of being able to leave the one i've got in its in, in its permanent home but it's it's just it's difficult to overstate how useful that has been for me yeah i mean it comes down to time and money and if you're wasting all of this time not making content because you have to set stuff up maybe see how much money it is to avoid that in the future um, but yeah, but when we talk about building habits and batch processes, um, a, a lot of time also gets wasted in mental energy. And there's a big difference between I am writing scripts uh, and I am filming stuff and I am shooting and editing, you know, and then promoting and all of that sort of stuff. There's all very different mindsets in a lot of ways. So it's a lot easier uh, to do a whole lot of the same thing at one time, you know, choose a day, boom, Monday, I'm going to write a bunch of scripts. Tuesday, I'm going to do my, my setup and I'm going to record as much as I can. And Wednesdays, I, you know, and Thursdays, I then edit and that's it. And then <laughs> Friday you upload and schedule stuff, you know, so you can get a lot more accomplished in that window because you're minimizing the amount of sort of downtime mentally and even downtime setting things up and whatever. Uh, so that's, that's what we mean when we're talking about building habits and batch processing. Um, you know, uh, make your schedule more efficient in what you're doing and when you're doing it. Absolutely. And I guess, you know, that's, that's been one of the big lies that we've been sold over the years is that multitasking is a good thing because, you know, <laughs> it, it requires a bit of cognitive load to, to switch between things. And I must admit, even in my day job, I'm like, I, I try to set up very tough boundaries and be like, you know, I'm working on this for this allocated time. Please don't disturb me unless something is on fire. Like, <laughs> you know, I just, I can't, you know, the distractions can be so jarring at times that it can compl completely take you out of the flow of what you're actually doing. So, yeah, keep that in mind. All right. So um, my name's John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof. And we're talking about the things that we've learnt in uh, 2022 uh, in terms of our video creation, content creation and live streaming. Um, I'm going to go to my, my sort of last um, point here. And this is to ask for what you want. And mm. I, you know, I, we talk, we spoke about this briefly last week. Like I, I don't like asking for things because I don't yeah. like hearing no. I don't like the rejection, but I think... <laughs> You know, if I don't ask for things, I will never get anything. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I mentioned this particularly in terms of uh, collaborating with other people. Um, so that's that's something that I'm really interested in doing more of in 2023. I must admit, I'm I really want to make sure they're a good fit for my audience and and my subject matter. So obviously, I speak a lot about live streaming and video and video editing. Um, and I guess like particularly on LinkedIn, you know, we do have LinkedIn lives and I do see a lot of people that are just sort of there to promote, you know, whatever they're, they're selling at the time. And I don't, I don't want to subject, 
anybody to that, least of all myself. Um, so I do really want to make sure they're a good fit. But again, I think, you know, you've got to, you've got to shoot your shot. You've got to have a go and just see where you end up. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to, to lean into that a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that's a really good point. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what I want, so I'll, I'll find out what that <laughs> is aside from a new laptop. Cause I may have killed my other one. Um, but we'll see about that. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think knowing those sort of goals of what you want are, are really important and putting it out into the world, whether or not you're into manifestation or visual, visualization and all that. I think there is something to all of that. Uh, and yeah, it it's good to have it out there for yourself, if not for other people to back, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, just, just in terms of even just having that clarity, and I guess... That's the thing, like, I talk about the FOMO a lot because yeah. I'm really subject to it too. So, you know, I, I'm trying to narrow my focus a little bit moving into the, the new year and, and deciding really what will, will serve me and my audience the best moving forward. So that's uh, that's something that I really want to, you know, I, I just want to be more intentional because, uh, you know, everything requires time and effort and energy. And, um, you know, I... I, I try not to complain about this too much, but I do spend a lot of time in front of the computer and I do have all kinds of muscle issues as a result of that. So, you know, mm. I, it sort of gets back to that, that whole teleprompter thing. It's like, if I can, if I can read something in a minute and be done, uh, rather than try to remember the script and, and take 15 minutes to do it, you know, that can be such a, a godsend. Oh yeah. All right. So, uh, hi, everybody that, that might be joining us live or even those watching the recording later on. But uh, my name is John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof and we're talking about the things that we learnt in 2022. Um, we have sort of covered our, our main points, but I am sort of curious, Sam, um, what tools have you enjoyed using in, in the last year? Sure. Uh, like I've, I've, I've touched on this earlier, but of course, uh, vertical video, especially TikTok, has been kind of a big thing for me this year. Uh, and I, I, I should say shorts as well. I'm trying to do a little more on the YouTube side with shorts, uh, but TikTok is just so much easier right now. And it has a really good built-in um, interactive system of like stitching and duets, which are two different ways of taking someone else's content, attaching your content to it. And you both kind of get, you know, views from that. You're not just ripping someone's video and nobody knows who they are. It's a direct correlation of like, this is the video that I'm talking about and there's their link and you can go check out the full video there. I think that's great. It's kind of what made YouTube work circa 2006, 2007 was the video replies, which they killed. And now that shorts is here, YouTube has brought back uh, YouTube reacts, I believe is what it's called. And you can do a similar sort of thing. It's not as smooth as the TikTok thing. I don't think as many people see it. Uh, I'm hoping it presents bigger and better because the views on YouTube are doing better than TikTok at this time. And I think that's great. So yeah, all of the vertical video stuff I'm playing in and, and really into. Um, and I guess um, I don't want to play devil. Well, maybe I do want to play sure, devil's sure. advocate, but um, <laughs> you know, obviously the American government seem to have some concerns yeah. about TikTok. So I guess it's probably another good reminder just not to have all your eggs in one particular basket. That's fair. Yeah, we'll 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 see what happens in the coming year. <laughs> um, that is, you know, obviously a good thing to keep an eye on, and be building other followings in other pockets as well. Uh, and the other things that I, I've really enjoyed using uh, to make those videos specifically is a uh, editing software that came from ByteDance, which is the the corporation behind TikTok called CapCut. Pretty sure CapCut's going to be around. That's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really, really good mobile app. It's also on desktop and there is some sort of cloud sharing, though I've never tried to move a project from my mobile to my desktop that way because generally I'm just done. Like you're doing a 15 second video. I, there's, I don't need to move that to my desktop or vice versa. But it's the, the, the advancements in 
what mobile technology can do, what mobile apps in editing software can do now compared to like 10 years ago is crazy. Cause I remember trying to do this 10 years ago and I could do it. It was tough. And now with phone sizes and all that kind of stuff, this, you could, you could legit cut like a feature film on your phone and never touch a computer. Uh, if it was a big enough phone, um, CapCut's great. It's got, you know, uh, customizable aspect ratios. You're not just doing vertical videos. You can do 16 by nine, nine by 16, one by one. I think you can even do custom formats if you really wanted to. It's got some very nice transitions and quick filters put in there. You can do speed ramping to like, you know, uh, slow down, speed up shots and things like that. There's uh, built in, you know, green screen and background removal. There's nothing that it can't do that as a, as a slightly advanced, you know, user, you wouldn't want. Um, like, it, it's hard. It's hard for me to go. What's something that any basic user would be looking for? Who's better than just I put two videos together? Like, you're not doing After Effects on it, but there's things that are close to that. There are is motion tracking and stuff like that. It's <laughs> decent. Um, so yeah, I think CapCut is just one of the best things I've found in this past year. And, uh, yeah. And I guess the other thing you've sort of alluded to it already, um, is, is the amp, um, the, Mm -hmm. the, the Amazon, um, uh, audio yes. uh, music service. So uh, I must say in full disclosure, um, I tried to listen to your first um, amp thing and there seemed to be some licensing things. And as an Australian, I couldn't quite yeah, oh, experience it, sure. but, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so, I mean, please tell us about that one. Yeah. So amp is something that I've just picked up in the last month or so. Maybe it's been two months already with the holidays. I can't tell anything anymore, but amp is uh it's a live audio service. That's what I'm going to call it. And it is backed by Amazon and they've been putting a good amount of marketing dollars behind it because every time I go on to like Instagram or Facebook, I'm seeing ads for it. Uh, in theory, we're both going out to amp right now. This is the first time I've tried to do this with this show. So I'm not hundred percent sure everyone's hearing you or they're just hearing me, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, we'll see. My the one problem with this is there's no archive, so I can't go back and look on it and be like, oh, oh okay. I didn't hear John at all. <laughs> so maybe at the end of the show we'll stick around a little longer just to mm-hmm. double check. Um, the the prime usage isn't talk radio. They actually have a giant uh, music library which is actual tracks. It's not one of these copyright free, you know, royalty free license things. It's actual songs people have heard uh and you can play them as if you had your own radio station um they do have a a monetizable program at some point uh i'm not part of that just yet but we'll see what happens with that so i don't have all the details on that but i think it's in its infancy right now it's like super early you can barely see 40 channels live when you go on it which is like a low you know bar to enter and i think it's going to just explode in this coming year very nice so it'd be it'd be fascinating to see how that plays out um and it's it's kind of interesting because i guess um and maybe correct me if i'm wrong here sam but like I'm, I'm assuming that you know you're playing that music but you're also sort of um you know talking to the audience as well so it's yes it's almost like an old school uh, radio experience in, in that regard. Yeah, which... it, it's very much a live stream experience without the video element. There is a, a mm-hmm. chat room and you can talk to your audience. You can see what they're saying. People can like it. They can share it. Uh, you have followers. It's it's all of the things that we're getting here without the video. And that's it. Plus, you can sure. play music, which you can't do here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll tell you about some of my tools, but first we've got a comment from Joe. So uh, yeah. Joe is asking, besides TikTok, he's heard of other sites, um, quite a few of them there. I must admit, I've not heard of any of those, but I'm sure. curious, Sam, have you have you heard of those? Are you using any so of those? I do have Odyssey accounts for both Sam Proof and Cute Avalanche because Odyssey, Odyssey is a uh, blockchain-backed, uh, video platform block or uh, odyssey also has um an integration with youtube so the minute you post something to youtube it'll post on odyssey so it's very low lift in in that sort of sharing element so i do have both of those i constantly forget it exists um 
It does also have live streaming, which I believe in the past six months, they opened up to anyone. Pre previously, it had like, you have to have a thousand followers or whatever, but I think it's now open to just anyone who wants to stream there. Um, I think they've had some controversial users on their platform that have probably stunted their growth a little bit. So I don't hear much about it. I don't see much about it. And yeah, like I said, I only check in on it every few months just to see if anything's popping off or happening there. The numbers seem very low. I've never heard of BitChute, um, I, which sounds like it's also blockchain based possibly. Uh, and Rumble I've heard of. I may have even signed up to Rumble, but I've never used it. Nice. So I guess, um, and we've, we've, uh, we've spoken about this before, but, um, you know, e even in terms of, of reusing and reposting that content, I guess the only thing you do need to keep in mind is, you know, if you are using, uh, you know, if you're using those music, you know, if you've got the Taylor Swift track going in the background, that's, you know, some platforms will have that licensing arrangement, some won't. So keep that in mind yes. as well. And, but and I mean, in principle... country to country, things are going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's funny because I... Um, I if you've ever and i'm a, i'm an australian if you couldn't tell from the accent um but you know it's amazing like sometimes if you use a vpn service and you access uh spotify for example and you see the different selections that are available elsewhere that aren't available here uh, it's it's kind of mind-blowing and i'm kind of old school i have a massive cd collection and um that's part of the reason why um because the, i i love sort of really obscure b-sides and remixes and live recordings and stuff and i just i can't find them on on uh on many streaming services but anyway that's fine okay um it's funny sam i was looking at a chat um message in uh, you know a message in the chat and i just couldn't figure out what it was but it's one of it's, one of sam's mine. bots so we're going out on onto sam's twitch channel amongst other places so that's yeah. uh you know that's that's fun all right, cool. Um, so, so uh, b before we move on, uh, thank you, Means, for uh, that. Yes, I had the. I, I thought Restream was going to redo the category on Twitch, but apparently it didn't. So that's taken care of. I did want to say uh, related to this, um, and we'll talk, you know, about other platforms in the future. We are going out to a number of platforms today, including D Live, which is one that probably a lot of people haven't heard of. It is another blockchain-based live streaming platform. Um, and uh, in the past, I've used a few other un relatively unknown platforms like Trovo, which I think we'll touch base on sometime in the next year. Or maybe maybe once a month, we'll like do a deep dive on different platforms or something like that. I think that might be worth doing. Uh, but I will also be having an article on my blog about the different platforms and sort of uh, what they offer coming up pretty soon. I've actually started that like a month ago and I'm in like, oh, so many platforms. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it's funny, I feel like we may have come slightly full circle because it's kind of like, you know, literally the first thing we started off with was don't spread yourself too thin on too many platforms. Right. And it's kind of like, yeah, but there might be an opportunity there. I might be able to use a tool to, to go to all the places. So I guess, you yes. know, just, just try something out and see how you go. And if it's something that you want to commit to moving forward. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, cool. I'm, I'm going to tell you about some of my favorite tools this year. And, um, you know, Sam's alluded to it earlier, but uh, Restream. So uh, Restream is a great piece of technology and I've been using it for, for quite a while. I recently actually paid for it because um, I was using the free version for the longest time. Uh, people that know me kind of know that I'm pretty obsessed with OBS Studio. And, uh, you know, I, I use, uh, I often use uh, Restream to take the output out of OBS Studio and send it to all the various places. Uh, but the other thing too, um, just, just about refining your processes and... Uh, you know, really embracing some of the things that will make your life easier is that we are actually having this conversation within Restream uh, Studio, which basically means we can just, we can open up a web browser, we can talk to each other, and we can uh, share things in that regard. And I, I'm a bit of a control freak. I kind of like to rearrange my screen and have it in a very particular way. But once I got over that and I sort of embraced some, some of the Restream um, templates and defaults, 
Um, I have come to the conclusion that I actually really like the the studio. It's uh, it's really simple to get yeah. stuck in and, and go. And you know, if you do a little bit of plan planning and think about your captions and your graphics and and things, it can be such a beautiful thing. Um, and it's worth mentioning too that you know, in the on the free option, you can actually broadcast to two different. Um, destinations uh, for, for free. So if you do want to try it out, if you are interested in live streaming, that's definitely something to check out. Yeah, Restream's great. Um, they they used to allow a lot more destinations on the free platform. And then uh, earlier this year, somewhere around spring, I think it was, they, uh, they dropped everything down to just the two, just in, in an effort to push people to the pro plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the the whole studio thing's really good. It's very simple. There's a lot less uh, knowledge needed to get started. Whereas if you drop just OBS Studio on someone who's never done it before, it's it's like dropping a ream of paper and being like, go write a novel because it's a big black blank area, and you're like, what am I looking at? Um, <laughs> there are a bunch of alternatives uh, to restream that are pretty good as well like be live and uh uh stream yard so oh what i just saw a new one the other day that it looked pretty decent but um restream's been kind of around the longest i think so they know what they're doing <laughs> yeah and i mean um they, there are all kinds of tools and i guess that's that's the thing these days you know there there are at least 10 15 tools that do the same thing right, yeah. uh, everywhere you go so you kind of have to go and compare the feature sets and, and the prices uh we i think we spoke about this when we had our um our lead up to black friday episode but i um like as i say i was using restream for the longest time and i just didn't want to pay for it and then sure. I, I i i was just being kind of stingy and to be honest <laughs> i i i bought an annual subscription and I've had no regrets. So yeah. don't does, don't need to necessarily be that stingy, I think. Does the plan that you're on give you a custom destination? Custom RTMP? I don't think so, no. I think okay. that was at a different price point. Okay. I would have been curious because we could have popped in. Uh, so some of the things Restream doesn't handle is the non 16 by nine platforms like Instagram or TikTok and things like that. So it'd be interesting to see what we could do putting it out to a platform like that. We don't, yeah, I, I guess we'll definitely have to try that at some point. Um, yeah. Again, I've, I'm not a huge in Instagram person, sure. um, which we covered last either. week, so we won't need yeah. to do that again. But <laughs> it's it's interesting. We should we should definitely check it out. I guess yeah. the other thing too is um, Restream now have the ability to sort of um, I, I don't know about the, in terms of the actual destinations, but certainly they have in the studio. There's a button that'll change from from vertical yeah. to horizontal, so that in itself isn't massively difficult. But um, yeah, so uh, Joe's uh, got a comment in the chat. So uh, talking about my accent, <laughs> funnily enough, couldn't quite place it. I was thinking New Zealand or Australia, and uh, referencing some. I, I'm assuming some YouTube channels there. So yeah, well now yeah. you know. <laughs> All right, cool. So I just want to mention um, some of my other favorite tools of the year. Uh, the next one is Camtasia. So Camtasia is not a new product, and it's certainly not a new product to me. I've been using it for many, many, many years. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an editing piece of software. But the the really nice thing that it does is it's really designed to capture your screen and work with sort of software tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talk about metadata and videos. It will literally yeah. record things like the path that your mouse has moved. So, oh, and, and the, yeah. the most recent updates have included things that can change. Uh, they actually replace the mouse that's physically on the screen with a vector image, and you can make <laughs> it like 500% th larger if you wanted to. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, you can zoom in and blur out things and, and focus mm -hmm. on things. It's really, really wonderful. But I guess, um, you know, it's one of those things that they, it's, you, you do buy the software. Um, the, it's not a subscription model as such, but if you do sort of uh, subscribe to their maintenance package, they will give you updates at the end of each year. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I don't really need most of those updates. I, I usually get them anyway because I like the company and I want to support them. Uh, but one year they did have a whole bunch of uh, of really beautiful, fancy, elaborate transitions. And for the life of me, I thought, I'm never going to use these in a million years. <laughs> but having sort of stuck my toe into the vertical short form videos, 
Um, if I if I actually have some software or an image or something in the background uh, with with the green screen type of effect, I found that that's the place where they actually come in really really handy. They oh, they make sure. it quite interesting because I guess you know if there's one one thing that beginning video editors tend to do, it's like use all of the effects and all of the animations and all of the colors and all right. of the fonts. So, you yeah. know, we try to avoid that a little bit, but the, there's some beautiful things. I, I, I think it would be great. Um, we, we're going to actually talk about what we'll be covering next year in, in next week's uh, show. So we'd love mm -hmm. to get some feedback on that. But I think one of the things I'm particularly interested in is if we can sort of compare and contrast um, CapCut with uh with camtasia at some point sure yeah um i mean obviously the screen recording thing is is a huge difference um and uh yeah we'll have to just go and see what the different possible uh options and features are there absolutely okay and my last um favorite tool or technology uh for 2022 is happy scribe so happy scribe is a captioning service um I really do believe, you know, if you're creating content, you should be doing it in, access in an accessible way. So we want to make yes. sure that our videos are <clears throat> captioned. And I know there are all kinds of automated um, captioning services um, mm -hmm. out there. And if you can see and hear, if you turn those on, you'll find that they're hilariously wrong a lot of the time. <laughs> um, yeah. And I guess for the, for, I, I mentioned the, the Black Friday um, discussion that we had. And up until that point, I was really interested in Descript, but... I just found that the workflow into scripts just, it didn't make sense to my brain. I really, mm -hmm. I didn't really want all the, the fancy features where it can emulate your voice and you can add things that you never said and all the rest. I really just wanted something that would help me caption videos uh, really quickly. So the nice thing about, um, about Happy Scribe is you upload your, your file. Um, it actually has options to choose between different accents, uh, which mm. is kind of cool. I don't know how well that's playing into the results of the, the automated right. first pass, but it, it's really interesting and I've never seen that before. Um, and then once, once it's been processed, I can go in and I can just really very quickly and easily make changes to that. And then I can either export a video with the captions burnt on, or I can also download the mm. SRT file and upload that separately. And it's just, it's, it's, it, it's not particularly feature rich, but it just does what I need it to do. And it's, it's yeah. very straightforward. That's cool. Um, how much sort of customization to the burn in do you get? Like, can you choose fonts and colors and sizes and you can. Yep. Um, so, uh, I, Probably should have brought it up on the screen. Let me see if I can do that quickly. But you certainly can do that. Um, yeah, we I can mean, do a whole they're... show about captioning. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and in fact, uh, yeah. So I guess, you know, it's one of those things and people, I, I guess different people have different life experiences and people, I, I, because of the, the short, um, in fact, I'll share my, my screen. I've got something up here. I can show you really quickly. Okay, so like you can hopefully uh, actually I've got to click one more button. There we go. So this is sort of a project that uh, that I created the other day. So essentially, what I can do is I can I and you'll see that some of these red words are the ones that it sort of guessed, and I I've gone through this and and updated this. But in terms of the styles, we can change the font, we can change the size. Um, I kind of wish I had a little bit more um, more control over the alignment because I kind of want it to be left aligned but centered within that block, which is not really something it gives me. Uh, but I can certainly change the color and the, the background. So again, you can go none, which is probably a contrast problem. Uh, outline, so again, probably not that great. Wrap or uh, a box. And again, I can sort of move that up or down. Um, to wherever I, I want it to be. I guess it's worth noting that that is kind of a setting for the entire video, so I can't really move it around too much. Um, and if I wanted to to do that, I'd probably export the SRT and bring it into um, into Camtasia and do some of those things manually. Yeah. But it's like, it's just, it's, it's so easy for me because um, I can just, I literally can go through and I can change the words or I can capitalize things. It does have your own um, a sort of thesaurus um, or dictionary, mm -hmm. a personal dictionary. So if there are expressions that you use all the time, right. um, you can certainly add those in there. So, cool. and then I can go and download, um, you know, I can generate a video with that blend, um, actually on there, or I can just get the subtitles only. Um, so, I mean... 
it's uh like I said, it 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 probably doesn't do a lot of things, but it just does that one thing that I needed it to do. And I hate to say it. And I don't know if you could hear that audio. Hopefully not. I don't think I should share the audio. <laughs> Uh, it's always great when you're live and you hear yourself talking back in <laughs> different words, not, not, not confusing at all, but, um, yeah. So, you know, it just, it's, it, for me, I, I do feel this great responsibility to, to do captions properly. I know all kinds of people yeah. are happy enough with, with automated and I just, it cracks me up because they're always wrong. Um, oh, yeah. and sometimes they're, they're wrong and, you know, it's close enough and people can probably infer what you meant, but sometimes it's really, really wrong. And, you know, I just worry someone's going to get sued one day because they didn't take five <laughs> seconds to check what it, it what it actually said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we use, um, <clears throat> a, uh, like a live captioner for, for streams on, uh, the kitten cam and, uh, many, many times during that hour or two that we're doing our chats there will be things that are, are just grossly wrong and you're like well is what it is it's mm -hmm. live <laughs> oh dear okay sam we've we've had a we're actually approaching the the hour so we've had a great conversation i just want to say thank you to everybody that's been out in the, the chat particularly um joe it's it's great to to see you out there we're going to be doing more of these conversations um in the new year we're going to be talking about things like video and live streaming and content creation and, and I, I sort of alluded to this earlier but we kind of want to use next week's uh session to talk about I guess content planning generally, but specifically the kinds of things that you would like us to, to, to cover in the new year. If there are particular platforms or software or uh, concepts that topics, you'd like us to explore, yeah. topics, absolutely. Um, you know, please, please let us know. And I hope you can join us for, for that discussion next week. Um, but Sam, where can people learn more about you and what your content and all of the wonderful things? Sure, you can find me pretty much on any platform as Sam Proof, but you can head over to my website, samproof.tv, and find all my links there. And uh, yeah, I'm streaming most weekdays in the mornings on twitch.tv slash samproof. Nice. And if you want to catch up with anything I'm doing, you can head over to johnlacey.com. We've got all the links to all of the places, uh, YouTube and LinkedIn and, and whatnot. Um, so again, thank you, uh, Sam, for, for sharing those lessons that we've, we've learnt. Um, yeah. I hope you all have a, uh, an exciting start to the new year. I mean, I don't really, I didn't wish people happy holidays because I kind of didn't want to put that much pressure on them because <laughs> it's been a weird couple of years. You um, have happy hope... holidays or else. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I, I hope things go well. And, I, you know, there are exciting things uh, on the horizon in the new year. So it'll be great to sort of check those out. So um, happy, happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. All right. We'll talk to you again soon.